How do you make the best update for an indie game? About a month ago, my college roommate and I launched our first indie game together, a 3D infinite runner made in Godot called Barrel Roller. We made the game in just a few weeks, so it had a lot of problems. We got a lot of feedback from you guys on how we can fix the game, so we decided to start working on the first big update for Barrel Roller. But how do you make a good update for an indie game? We're gonna find out. So before we get into the plans that we have for this next update, let's talk about how launching the game went. I'm grateful for everyone who watched the last video and gave us some feedback on the game because we were able to figure out what the biggest things are that we need to improve. So let's talk about that. What were people saying about the game? All right, so one of the biggest things that people notice is that at the start of the game, there's often these pretty bad lag spikes, which can be pretty gnarly. So obviously we need to fix those. Second thing is a lot of people feel like the collisions and the movement just aren't super intuitive or forgiving, which I mean, obviously he's rolling on a barrel, so it checks out that it's kind of hard to figure out how to move around. But we also don't want to make it so difficult that you can't figure it out. And then obviously there's other things like you can't actually do anything with the coins right now. So we need to add a shop where we'll add some skins. And then people were also asking for more levels and stuff like that. So those are kind of the biggest pieces of feedback that we got. So going back in time a little bit, these were my initial thoughts on the update. So for the next version of the game, we're thinking that we want to add a couple different types of environments that you can move through. Obviously for one of them, a classic is doing like an ice or like a snow level. For some reason, I really want to do that because I think it'd be a fun art challenge. Is that super important for the gameplay? No but I think it would be fun. I found a really cool reference image for like some ice and glacial type of things. And I'm trying to recreate like some sort of an ice. I don't even know what you call it. Like an ice spike. This is what I've got so far. Um, it's a little bit difficult to do the texture painting for ice. I haven't quite figured it out, but I'm, it's a learning process, so it's been good. So obviously there's a lot of work that has to get done still before we can release the next update for the game. I've loved getting feedback from the comments on the last video and I'm excited to see where this game goes. Over the next few weeks, Adam and I decided we actually wanted to reduce the scope of the update and just focus on making one winter level. We wanted to reduce the scope and just make it a good update. So in review, this is what the update will be comprised of. Obviously general bug fixes, like fixing lag spikes and making the collisions a little bit better. And then we're gonna try and make the game a little bit more intuitive by adding an invisible tutorial, which just means the obstacles will ramp up in difficulty over time, and also fine tuning the movement and collisions to make them less frustrating. Finally, we're also adding a menu screen, which includes the shop. In that shop, you'll finally be able to use your coins and you'll be able to buy new skins, as well as a new snow area. We've decided to name this update the Frostbound Bonanza Sub-Zero Barrel Roller 2.0, the glacial nexus of everlasting winter, or the winter update for short. So here's how the update is coming along. Over the next few days, I started making other winter themed obstacles. I made a tree in the morning and then I made a rock later at night. I'm not sure if I like how they turned out, but they're all right. We decided to do a grayscale background so that we could manually change the hue and saturation to dynamically change the scenes as the player moves into a new area. And then we went and organized on Trello some of the goals that we have for this winter update. The next day, I made another pine jury and I think this one looks a lot better. So that just goes to show, practice makes perfect. And obviously there's a ton of other things that I've been needing to learn to get into game dev lately. Recently, I've been diving into learning blueprints in Unreal Engine with a class on Skillshare, who is sponsoring today's video. Skillshare is the largest online learning community for creatives with thousands of classes ranging from productivity to art to game development. I legitimately have loved using Skillshare over the last few months to learn Godot and Unreal Engine. In particular, this class about Unreal Engine blueprints has been awesome. It's subdivided into really small lessons so I can watch a couple of them every day and make a lot of progress towards learning Unreal Engine. They've also got great classes on learning Blender or drawing or any other creative medium that you want to learn for game development. Especially with the new year, now is a great time to flex your creative muscles and learn a new skill that you want to develop. The first 500 people to click the link in the description of this video will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can get started today. Now, I'm not gonna lie, over the next few weeks after I made some of those winter models, not a whole lot got done because it was the end of the semester and we were hard at work preparing for finals and stuff like that. But after finals, we got back to business. So we're back at work on Barrel Roller after a busy week of finals. We kind of tried to organize everything we want for this winter update in Trello. Right now, I'm working on like some shop stuff, how we want to do the shop in the main menu. And Adam is remaking the entire game in Godot because there were some lag spike issues. We're still trying to figure stuff out. It's looking great so far. During this time, Adam and I went home for the holidays and I realize now I totally should have recorded an epic travel montage, but this is all I have to offer. <laughs> So we continued working on the game from our ends over break. 
As you can see, I am back home for the holidays and I'm hard at work making the shopkeeper for the game. A couple cool things so far. I've discovered how to use shape keys in Blender, which is really cool. You can basically alter the vertexes of a certain shape. So I used that for the mouth because I thought it would be funny if he could talk. Right now I'm working on animating just a basic idle animation and probably a talking animation and then we'll have to continue working on some other elements that are going to be found in the shop. He kind of looks like the barrel roller but a little bit different which makes me think that maybe they're part of the same species or something. I don't know, I haven't really thought about the lore for barrel roller. I'm open to fan fiction if you want to try to write lore for barrel roller. I also took some time over the break to finally beat Tears of the Kingdom which was awesome. As a game developer, playing games is really good to get some inspiration and just get more motivation to keep making great games. After I modeled and animated the barrel roller himself, I needed to start working on the concept art for what I wanted the whole shop to look like. Recently I've been using Pinterest more and more to find reference for things that I want to make, and it's helping me grow as an artist so much faster. I don't know why in the past I've always been so against using reference. I think I just didn't realize how helpful it was. In the meantime, Adam was grinding on the plane ride home and got the lag spikes fixed. We added a couple of new skins, but they're really not that unique. We just changed the colors a little bit. I'll talk more about all the cool skins that we made in just a sec. So now that I have a very rough idea of what I want the shop to look like with a little piece of concept art that I drew up, I'm starting to work on that in Blender. It kind of sucks like not being super good at Blender still, but with every model I make, I get a little bit better. So gotta keep at it. Because like today I just finished playing Tears of the Kingdom and it was just a uh, work of art. And it really makes you inspired to just start making stuff, but it's hard because I'm still not good at making stuff. It's about finding that balance because if you don't make more stuff, you're not gonna get better at it. So just gotta keep plugging away. After some fun holiday celebrations, we traveled back to college and continued working. Adam got screen wrapping working seamlessly, which will help with the issue where you could just kind of hide in the corner of the screen and you couldn't die. And then we also got the level transition working, which looks pretty cool. Obviously, we're still planning on improving the look of the winter area by adding a snow effect and some other stuff, so it's totally not finished, but this is what we have so far. And then obviously, last but not least, the shopkeeper needs to sell something. So we're starting to work on some skins for the game. I released a YouTube short a couple days ago and I've gotten a ton of really good suggestions for skins we should add to the game. You guys are so creative and there were some really funny ideas. I think several people had the idea of switching the barrel roller and the barrel so that there's a barrel rolling on top of the barrel roller instead, which I just think is hilarious. So that's what I'm up to right now is I'm working on making a bunch of skins for the game. In the meantime, Adam is finishing up the level transition and we're just getting everything ready for this update. I'm thinking about maybe doing like some live streams where I work on skins for barrel roller so let me know if that'd be something you'd be interested in watching. So, how do you make the best update for an indie game? I think the number one thing is getting constant playtest feedback and improving what you have to make it more intuitive. You know how like when you're around a certain smell a lot, you kind of become nose blind to it and you don't even recognize it anymore? I feel like as game developers, we kind of get that way about our games. Because you made the game, if there's any bugs or just bad movement or bad mechanics, it still feels intuitive to you because you made it. Thing number two for making a great update is adding some quality new content, like this little guy. So, that's how we laid the groundwork for this update. It's not quite finished yet, Yet, but we're hoping to get it out by the time I put out the next video. I'm gonna be talking about how we took all of the playtest feedback and did something that game developers never do, listening to the community. It'll be a challenge, I know, but make sure you subscribe if you wanna see that video next. And then in the last video, I talked about how we came up with this idea and how we started making Barrel Roller as full-time college students. If you wanna see that video, make sure to go watch that next. Thank you for watching, goodbye.